Tenure Concepts and Terms. Land tenure is defined as the relationship, whether defined under formal de jure law or under customary law, that individuals and groups hold with respect to land. Land tenure rules define the ways in which property rights to land are allocated in a particular society. Secure tenure means that people, individuals, groups who use land and occupy land have clear and long-term rights to the land. They don't have to worry about being arbitrarily evicted, thrown off, or have, to have their rights cut off. Providing land tenure security lies at the heart of many economic, social, political, and environmental challenges that developing countries face. In Africa, most of the um, livelihood uh, strategies are based on land because without food, without land you can't have food, you can't have most of the uh, uh, livelihood needs. Then land becomes one of the critical aspects that we talk about. The security of tenure is valuable because if somebody knows that they're going to be on a particular piece of land in the long term, uh, they feel a confidence that they can invest their labor, they can invest their capital, even modest amounts of capital, uh, in investments that may take them some years to recover. If land tenure is not secure, if it's not defined, if it's unclear, people will often be in conflict because people have different expectations about one's relationship to land. In fact, land rights has been a major source of conflict in the world over the past several centuries. People's ability to have access to land or access to their territories, the rights to use those, the rights to manage them, the rights to sell them, and the rights to exclude other actors from, from damaging or harming uh, those forest resources. Those are the rights we're concerned about safeguarding. Property rights have been compared to a bundle of sticks, where each stick represents a right or benefit stream. It's important to know that property rights are shaped by both statutory and customary traditions and rules. Rights to these sticks within the bundle often include the right to use, sell, lease, mortgage, or donate the resource. In many developing countries, complex bundles of rights are held on the same piece of land. On a single piece of land, different people can possess rights to use and manage resource assets. For example, a person may have the right to lease land, but not to sell it. People have both rights and obligations in any tenure regime. It is often helpful to consider the spectrum of tenure arrangements affecting land management. Private lands are those held by individuals, the private sector, and other legal entities. Rules governing private property ownership and intergenerational transfers are well defined. Common land consists of resources that are held jointly by a group of people or community. These resources could include community forests, sacred forests, fishing areas, coral reefs, grazing land, small lakes, and streams. Often, rules governing these resources are hard for outsiders to observe, but communities will describe the rules and sanctions governing the use of these resources in great detail. State lands include national parks, forest reserves, and other resources set aside for management by the state. These rules are usually well recognized and clear. The state has many rights, including those to hold and tax property, to regulate land and resources, and employ the power of eminent domain to take private property for a public use. Increasingly, governments enact policies and laws 
to devolve authority to local communities and government entities to manage land and other natural resources. This may occur under co-management arrangements, cases in which both government and local communities together negotiate and enforce jointly recognized rules for responsibly managing natural resources. At the other end of the spectrum are open access resources. These are resources to which everyone has unrestricted access and are not considered the property of anyone. An example being the ocean beyond territorial limits. Open access resources can be abused when customary or community rules have broken down and are no longer respected, or when state lands are not protected. Often, we see this around unrestricted access to water and grasslands. The term land governance refers to rules, policies, processes, institutions, and structures created to manage the use, allocation, access, control, ownership, management, and transfer of land and natural resources. Legal pluralism is a reality in most countries. That is, within any one country, multiple property rights systems may coexist. Customary systems may include tribal, indigenous, religious, or cultural systems that determine ways land is allocated, managed, or inherited. One of uh, the ways we could do it is for the different policy makers to realize and recognize the importance of the traditional norms and also incorporate them in the legal systems. The challenge would be on how to legalize what is called traditional, other than relying on what we call the formal law. How do we integrate the formal and the informal? When should we draw onto the informal and the former. So I think that would be the best, to have a hybrid of rules and regulations that take care of uh, the tradition and the modern. Statutory systems refer to formal legal systems determined and defined by a national, regional, or municipal governments or international conventions. Since customary systems are based on traditional, religious, or cultural structures, these rights may not be consistent with the statutory laws and regulations of the country. One development concern is to determine ways to balance the two systems within a country's context. What's the best way to harmonize customary rights, which are the, the, right, the, the approaches that um, traditional communities, whether they're tribes or, or other kinds of local communities, have managed land resources and have allocated rights and protected them, versus statutory rights, which is the law of the nation, the formal law that the formal government has. So oftentimes the, what's in statutory law is not consistent with what's in customary law and sometimes it's in conflict. It is also important to consider gender in any discussion of land tenure and property rights. Formal laws may guarantee women equal rights to own, inherit, and use property. But if the laws are not enforced, women become vulnerable. Conversely, some customary laws limit women's property rights. For many years, people assumed that when a household had rights to land, all members of that household benefited equally. In reality, women often have fewer rights to land than men within a household, and their limited rights are regularly subordinate to those of men. If you actually ask couples, they will, many of them will tell you that the land is jointly owned by the husband and the wife, which makes it seem as though it's very equitable. Although they say they own it jointly, the women have fewer rights over it. If something happens to the household, so if their husband dies, if their husband leaves, often the women will lose all of the rights that they have to that land. These issues, terms and concepts, will be discussed throughout this training film as we explore country cases and experiences from around the world and examine how land and its tenure have a direct impact on people. For more content on land tenure concepts and terms, visit the USAID Land Tenure and Property Rights Portal.